That's right. It's a TBR-ish. Kinda. Sorta. Maybe. Welcome to Mad on Books, where I talk about fantasy, mostly science fiction sometimes, and comics occasionally. I'll come clean. It's not really much of a TBR. It's more of a list of books that I've got in mind that I will probably mood read from, but there isn't much of a plan to it. They're all books I want to read, so I guess it is technically a TBR in that sense, but I'm not planning things. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that last year I overcommitted to pretty much everything. I joined Buddy Reads, I joined Readathons, I made a strict-ish TBR, I hosted a read-along on my channel. And I backed out of almost all of it, except the stuff that I was planning on my own channel. That is something I would like to avoid this year. So I am making as little plan as possible. I'm picking up whatever I feel like, whenever I feel like it. But mostly, probably, possibly, maybe, those books will be selected from the list in this video. So let's get started. These are some of the most exciting things for me. When I travel, I like to wander around randomly and discover new things. When I'm playing an open world video game, I like to do exactly the same thing. And that's one of the biggest attractions to those games for me is just discovering things. Series I have not read ever are always a bit of an adventure for me. And these are no exception. I've had these on my list for probably about a year. And this year, I want to at least start them. They are The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. I've read some short stories by Ken Liu. I've heard from a million people, I'm exaggerating, that Dandelion Dynasty is pretty damn hot. So I can't wait to start that. Sun Eater. I have been accused already of jumping on the hype train, but I've had Sun Eater on my list since I started watching Mike's channel. Mike has been talking about it forever. At the moment, I'm sure that Daniel Green is gonna get a lot of credit for hyping this, and he does have a huge reach. So he should get a lot of credit for it because it's meant to be an awesome series, but I got it from Mike a long time ago, and I've just been really slow about getting to it. I've seen a lot of interviews with Chris Rocchio, and he sounds like a really, really nice and super smart guy. He says it's influenced by Frank Herbert and Dune, which I love, by Gene Wolfe and Book of the New Sun, which I love. So I'm expecting to love Sun Eater. And last but not least, I want to start Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams. This has been on my TBR literally for decades. It's one of those classic fantasy series that everybody probably should have read back in the 80s. And I was aware of it. And I came this close to reading it so many times, but somehow... For no particular reason, I never really did. And I would like to catch up on that. I've got some old used paperbacks, which are Chunky Boys. I've read other things by Tad Williams, Otherland, I read all of and really enjoyed it. I like his writing style. I like his imagination. And I can't wait to start Memory, Sorrow and Thorn. I have started lots of series and bounced around and not stuck to them and not finished them. I would like to do that this year. Well, maybe not finish all of them, but at least some of them. We'll see. Maybe. Probably. Could happen. Long Price Quartet. Joanna and I started a buddy read of Long Price Quartet together shortly before I took my five-month break from YouTube. So I was also pretty much taking a break from reading. So I read the first Long Price Quartet. I really liked it. I put it in my book awards for 2023, but there's three more books. I want to continue and get deeper into it because it starts as a really, really interesting and kind of unique series. Terra Ignota also ended up on my book awards 2023. It's a tetralogy, a quartet, four books, and somehow I read the first three books in quick succession and then didn't start the fourth one. So that one should be one I can finish this year for sure. The Adan Trilogy by my friend Philip Chase. I read the first book. It was a great setup. It left me with lots of questions and lots of things I wanted to learn more about. And I've got the second and third book on my shelf now. I would really like to get these done this year because it was such a nice start. 
and I can see where maybe it's going and there's a lot of things where I'm curious about where it's going and I'm really looking forward to that as well. I keep saying that, don't I? This one's kind of a cheat, mostly just to encourage my friend Tori Tekken to write the second book in her trilogy, The Legends of the Bruhai. I read The Bloodstones, did a review of it, did an interview with Tori. Just like The Way of Adan, it was a really good start that left a lot of things as big question marks in my head and, ooh, where's this gonna go? What's gonna happen to that character? When are they gonna get killed? That kind of thing. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't even know if the second book is actually gonna come out this year, but I hope it does. If it does, I will immediately read it. This list is even longer than the previous one. In fact, it's probably as long as the previous two lists combined. That is, books I would like to reread this year. I've been big on rereads. Last year was about 50% rereads. For me, rereading is often like reading for the first time because I have such a garbage memory. And I read some of these books so long ago that there's no way I can remember all of the details. So right now I am reading The Spear Cuts Through Water. I read The Spear Cuts Through Water last year for the first time. Evie very kindly gifted it to me Christmas 2022. I loved it. It was my book of the year last year. It's amazing in so many different ways. It's an awesome story. It's a super interesting world, but it's also written in such a style. The prose style is unique in my experience. The structure is unique in my experience. It was an amazing book. The Malazan Book of the Fallen. I started this channel basically with a Malaz Everything Re slash Read, where I'm rereading the 10 books of the Malaz Book of the Fallen, and then I want to continue and read the books by Ian C. Esselmont and the other books by Stephen Erickson that are outside of the 10 books. I stalled on Reaper's Gale. Reaper's Gale is a thick book. And it's the, just making sure, it's the seventh book. I remember it being awesome. There is one storyline in it that I wasn't so crazy about, the all. If you know, you know. But otherwise, I remember it being a very exciting and engrossing book. If you know the channel, you know that I have been rereading Realm of the Elderlings. And I've finished 20 Man, which means I'm a little over what I guess you could call halfway through. And I can't wait to dive into the Rainwild Chronicles, the fourth series within the mega series. I'd like to get at least Rainwild Chronicles finished this year, hopefully. I kind of doubt I'll get the last trilogy finished this year, but we'll see. Lord of the Rings. I am starting The Two Towers this month and hope to get into The Return of the King next month or at the latest in March. I will be doing vlogs for those just like I did for The Fellowship. And it's so nice to be back in Middle-earth. That's all I really need to say about that. And in general, it's not really a series exactly, but more Tolkien lore outside of Lord of the Rings. I definitely want to reread or have another go at the Silmarillion. I kind of DNF'd it when I was a teenager. It's kind of a history book, kind of a mythology book, and it was just a bit too dry for me. But I think me being me now, it'll be a very different experience. But beyond that also, I have The Fall of Numenor now, I have Tales from the Perilous Realm, I have other things like that coming up that I will be getting. And I just want to get a bit deeper into the lore. I'm, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan for sure. I've read it over 10 times, but I wouldn't call myself a Tolkien expert and I don't really have any aspirations to be, but I would like to know more about the lore and experience just more of this professor's crazy, amazing imagination. Considering that the second part of the Dune movie is coming out, I would like to reread Dune and maybe actually the first four books. I don't know if I'll manage that this year, but I would like to try and I would like to at least finish the first book so I've got it fresh in my head when I'm looking at the second part of the movie. The Black Company. Tori and I have had talks about doing a buddy read. I don't know if that'll happen. I think she's got a pretty busy schedule, especially considering she needs to get the second damn book out. But even if we don't read it together, I would like to get back into The Black Company. I read it years ago. I binged it, basically. I went through all of the books. 
up to a point, and I'm not sure exactly where that point was. I think it was maybe the fifth or sixth book. And I burned out on it. I think I, it was just too much of Black Company all at once. And I stopped and never continued. So I would like to start over again because garbage memory. And I know that it was very inspirational for Steve Erickson in The Molasses Book of the Fallen. In fact, I think Reaper's Gale is dedicated to Glenn Cook, the author of The Black Company. I would definitely like to get back into it. Fafford and the Grey Mouser. This is one that Tori and I have talked about doing a buddy read on and that we still are planning on doing. I'm just not sure exactly when. Fafford and the Grey Mouser are a series of very small novels written by Fritz Leiber. They are old school sword and sorcery. They are probably the original, the OG fantasy bromance. It's two guys, a barbarian and a sneaky thief guy. The sneaky thief guy, the Grey Mouser, is the guy who inspired the class thief in Dungeons and Dragons. It's a classic of sword and sorcery. It's funny. It's adventurous. It's kind of scary horror-ish in places. It's such a good series of books. And I've got them up on my shelf. There are two fantasy masterworks, bind-ups basically, that have a bunch of the smaller novels in them. And much like Amber and Elric, these are books that you can really easily slip in between other things because each of them is 120 or 150 maybe pages. So they're short, they're quick, they're easy, they're light compared to things like Robin Hobb and Stephen Erickson's work, and they're just all around fun. The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever. This is one where I'm wondering about the nostalgia effect. I read this a couple of times before I was 20, and that was a long time ago. I'm not certain that they hold up. I know that Stephen Donaldson, the author, knows what he was doing for sure. People say they are Tolkien derivative. There are a couple of controversial scenes in the first book. I'm really curious what I will think of these now. I read The Rift War Saga by Raymond E. Feist also, I believe, when I was a teenager. It's a mage school before Harry Potter was even an idea. It's a portal-ish fantasy where two worlds kind of collide and there's a war and a lot of tension between these two worlds. I remember it being really, really interesting at the time. That may be because I had just not read that much fantasy yet. I've read a lot of fantasy since then, so I'm not sure what I'll think of these, but I've got them on my shelf and I would like to at least start them this year. One of the things I definitely learned from being a booktuber last year is to keep it spicy. By that I mean, I often last year was reading a really chunky, complex, deep, dense book, and I would finish it and start another chunky, complex, deep, dense book. I would like to not do that this year and pace myself a bit better and insert things in between those chunky books I'm reading to keep things interesting. What I wanna do for that is short stories to start with. I've been collecting short stories. I've got about 11 books that are only short stories. And some of them are like The Paper and Menagerie by Ken Liu, which is a collection of short stories only by him. Other ones are collections by a bunch of different authors. Some of them, interestingly, extend worlds that I've read in. So Robin Hobb short stories that are part of the Six Duchies or Stephen Erickson short stories that are part of the Malazan world. I've got a bunch of those. I definitely will be sprinkling those in liberally to keep things interesting. Then I've got a lot of standalones, such as Piranesi, which I would love to reread, maybe this year. Something Wicked This Way Comes, maybe also reread this year. But ones I haven't read before at all, I really want to get to Lonesome Dove. Allow me to note, I'm aware that Lonesome Dove is a chunky boy and isn't really something to sprinkle in between other things. But it is a standalone, not a chunky one book of 10 chunky books in a series. Augustus. I loved Stoner even though the premise sounds super boring. And John Williams, unfortunately, didn't write that many books before he died. But one of them is Augustus, and it's a completely different 
thing than stoner. Every book, I think, that John Williams wrote is completely different from every other book that he wrote. Augustus is set in ancient Rome. It's an epistolary novel, so it's a bunch of letters that Caesar Augustus wrote to various people. That's all I know about it, other than a lot of people I know seem to really love it. Legend by David Gemmell, another real fantasy classic that I probably should have read decades ago and that I've been on the border of my brain aware of since then. I bought it recently. I definitely want to get to it. And it's also not so thick, so it's pretty easy to get to, I think. A Canticle for Leibowitz. Uh, Canticle is a reread for me. I read it a long time ago, and I believe I've read it twice already, but I remember it being remarkably good. I talked about it recently in my book haul. I won't say much more, except I'd like to get to it. There was a fair bit of talk bouncing around recently about some Ursula Le Guin science fiction. And I read Earthsea a long time ago, and again, a pretty long time ago. And I've never read any of her science fiction, but she is meant to be a super accomplished author also in science fiction. So I picked up The Left Hand of Darkness and The Dispossessed recently, and I would like to read both of those this year. Outside of the science fiction and fantasy and comics, I want to get back into two of my favorite authors. So this will be also rereading stuff, more like contemporary literature, Peter Carey and Paul Auster. I mentioned them numerous times in recent videos. I won't say any more, but I've got a few books by them. I've got all of Paul Auster's books up there on the shelf. I will definitely be getting back into a bit more of them. And I already mentioned The Chronicles of Amber. I am going to continue. I read the first book. There are 10. 10. I will continue with those. They're super thin. They're super easy and quick to slip in between other things. Same with Elric of Melnibone stories. I've got all three of the bind-ups, so that's nine or 10 stories, I think, as well as Discworld. Alan from the Library of Alexandria and Derry from Derry's Read It Before convinced me by gushing a whole bunch that Discworld was worth having a look at. I tried Guards Guards, I really enjoyed it. I have the next two or three City Watch books on my shelf, ready to go, and I look forward to a little more fantasy with lighthearted humor, intelligent, lighthearted humor. That's my list. These are books that I will not promise to read. I will not guarantee that I will read any of them. I will certainly read some of them. And no doubt something will pop up that isn't actually on this list and will work its way in there because I am committing myself to as little as possible. The main thing I'm committing myself to in 2024 is to mood read and read whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want to read it. Let me know down in the comments, are there any books that you think I would actually really, really love that I have not included here? Are there any books that you would really love to see me read and talk about? Like and subscribe and all of that crap as usual. And I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying reading and your life in general. I hope you've got as many awesome books lined up for 2024 as I do, and I will see you next time.